Welcome back, welcome back. This is still uh, Thursday Vibes, why in the morning? And we are on to a fast segment of the day, Sport on Tech, where we are going to talk about social media management. How exactly can you make the most out of social media for your business or for your brand? That's what we're going to talk about. And for that conversation, we have been joined by Juan Kimani Patrick, who's the CEO of the Callistic Group Limited. Most welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm this glad is, to be here. Uh -huh. yes. And this, I've uh, just come to the knowledge that this is not your first time, so you are an <laughs> like second uh, <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. uh, Thank you, Asante. Oh. All right. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what you do before you even get into the topic. Well, my name is Kimani. I run a company called the Calstic Group Limited. We mm -hmm. are a brand communications agency. And brand communications is the intersection between Mm -hmm. uh, public relations and uh, branding. But our services fall under three categories. We have solutions in public relations, we have services in brand strategy and design, and then you have digital and social media, which I believe is the mm -hmm. center of our conversation today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we're focusing on today. <coughs> yes. So let's start with uh, why is it important to have, you know, why is social media management important in the first place? Well, before we get into social media management, there is basically social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are living in a technologically advanced and accelerated world where you need to put yourself out there. And the good thing is we have had people like Mark Zuckerberg uh, who have created platforms for us. We have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, X, uh, TikTok, and all these platforms. And basically, they are social networks where you create an account, uh, get to connect with uh, people you went to school with, people uh, in, in different spheres of, you know, um, of life. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, anywhere people converge, there's definitely a lot of things that they want to do together, not just post pictures, videos, and all that. But also, they'll find a commercial value into it. They'll find a social value into it. Uh, some will build their businesses there. Mm -hmm. Some will drive their social... Um, interest there that is for the people who are into community based organizations they want to drive their agenda if you're a politician you want to grow your poli your, your, your 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 ambitions there and drive your influence but at the same time if you're a professional you want to showcase your to showcase your expertise through thought leadership sharing industry-based content industry-based uh, advice and uh, such kind of things mm -hmm. and basically when you're posting that content when you're looking at who has commented, who has liked, who has said what, who has shared, and at the same time looking at what others are posting and all that. Mm -hmm. That's what we would call social media management. You're actually managing your profile on that platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's, it's really important if, if you've put an account out there, it, it's really important for you to look at the kind of content that you share. You, 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 you ask yourself when you will be sharing exactly what you will be sharing, uh, looking at what people are saying about what you're sharing, responding to them. Uh, basically, that's what management is all about. What management is. Uh, yes. Does that uh, only, is that only limited to those that have a brand or have a business that they are, you know, using social media to promote? Or is it also for people who are just using social media for the social uh, benefits of it? The truth of the matter is everybody has a brand, whether it's personal, business, or both. Mm -hmm. um, so, the moment you are born and you start growing, you already have a personal brand. Okay. There is a yeta, the media personality, the yeta, a yeta, the, um, the lady who she aspires to be and all those things. Mm -hmm. So, you have, even before you get into business, you have you as a person. How do you want people to perceive you? What do you want them to know about you? What do you stand for? I mean, that is what you want uh, people to know. Do you want people to know you as this um, very serious journalist who shares only business content, mm -hmm. uh, but is also fun, or you want people to just know you're a humorous person? In as much as you, you may not be, you know, teaching people anything or driving any agenda, but probably you could be using it to share memes, mm -hmm. and people will be coming to your Definitely. to your Facebook account to, to, to read memes or see funny videos. I mean, they will associate you with that. Oh, okay. So everybody has a brand, whether it is personal or business, and it is your responsibility mm -hmm. to manage that brand and manage 
the whole aspect of that brand on how exactly you want to be perceived, exactly what you want uh, people to know and associate you with. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, uh, whether you know it or not, and you're listening or you're watching this conversation, it is a perfect moment for you to understand that you really do have a brand and people are watching and following and seeing you. Okay, yeah. so everyone has a brand. We have that clear. <laughs> yes, uh, th that is and clear. That is clear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and how, what do you get to benefit from it, from you know, managing your social media? What are the benefits? Well, let me say this. When you open an account, definitely, whether you just wanted to find out how LinkedIn works or how Facebook works or what TikTok is all about, the fact of the matter is you're putting yourself out there for people to discover you. So whether you like it or not, people will discover you. Uh, uh, there's quite a lot of times, mm -hmm. almost every day I meet people and they're telling me, oh, I see you on LinkedIn, I see you on Facebook, I remember that video you posted, I remember the, this comment you made somewhere. So you really do not necessarily have to post something, but the moment you like something, the moment you comment on something, the moment you share something, mm -hmm. any interaction you, you make, there's this saying that internet never forgets. Yeah. So people can see you. So I mean, the biggest benefit is people can see you. And you're able to say, uh, you meet someone in Kwa Ground, Tunasamanga Kwa Ground. Yeah, Kwa Ground, you will be able mm -hmm. to associate with the person you, you see on the internet. On the so internet. It, that, that is one of the key benefits, but also, mm -hmm. If you're in business or you're building a personal, seriously building your personal brand in a particular area, mm -hmm. uh, definitely it gives you an opportunity to showcase who you are, showcase what you, sh you care most about, showcase your expertise, and drive uh, whether it's business, promote your products and services. If, if you're a content creator, you promote your content. Whether it's free or paid, you, you are able to put yourself out there. So it gives you an opportunity to build your brand, to grow your agenda, mm -hmm. to also at the same time make income and also make an impact. Because if you share content that people can learn from uh, and respond to questions that people have, I've seen a lot of people doing that, you're making a change and an impact in the community. Okay, so yes. there's something else apart from money that people get, and that's yes. the impact. Before we get, even get to the uh, income benefits that people get for bus their businesses, yes. while we were talking earlier uh, off camera, you said yeah. you don't really believe in content creation as people have it now and it's the in thing that people are getting YouTube channels and everything. Why is that? Well, um, to, to, to make my point clear, mm -hmm. I didn't say I don't believe in content creation. Okay. What I really don't support is um, you're there as a young youth you've gone to the University of Nairobi, which is just here, and you've graduated, or whichever college you went to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the fact is, there's mass layoffs everywhere. So if there's mass layoffs anywhere in the world, definitely the, the, the jobs available are very limited, and we are living in a very competitive world. So you've graduated, no job for you, and you think, uh, now it's time for me to, to create content. I've seen um, a particular content creator, I don't want to mention names. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen so and so um, create content. They have huge following, a lot of um, viewership on YouTube, and they're getting brand endorsements. They're making an income from ads that are running on their plant, on their, on their, on their yeah. videos. Yeah. And then you just sit yourself out there and say, well, I have a phone that has a camera. Why can't I just venture into this? Mm -hmm. And you're venturing into it, number one, out of frustration. Uh, I don't have a job so I can create content. And then you're like, uh, I've seen so and so has, uh, is making money from this and you want to start and then start making income tomorrow. But if you sit down with that person, they'll tell you. I was, I mean, let me be honest. I was watching a video from Crazy Kenai yesterday and mm -hmm. uh, last night and he was saying he started his content creation journey in 2017. That is over oh six goodness. years ago. Mm -hmm. But when you look at him, he has over 900,000 uh, followers. He's shooting content in and out of the country. I mean, he's like making it big in the content exactly. creation world. And you want to start today and you want to get into his level. Forgetting the amount of work that he has put in, the number of years that have passed mm -hmm. for him to get where he is. So, and what happens is you find people are starting uh, content creation business uh, and then they get frustrated down the line because, I mean, they're not getting the income they were thinking they could, they they could make. So 
it's, it's really important if you're getting into a particular type of business, whether it's content creation, whether it's uh, selling um, uh, shoes or dresses online and whatever, that person you saw doing that, just try to reach out to them and have a conversation with them and ask them exactly what they did to get where they are. And then ask yourself, how long am I going to, to be in this and how much am I willing to invest? Not just about money, but also the time and the commitment. Mm -hmm. And how strong you are in overcoming challenges because challenges will be there and there will be very many. You have to eat them every morning for mm -hmm. breakfast. How can you withstand that to be able to get to the level of that person that you really look up uh, to? Uh, look up to? Okay. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Now, speaking about businesses uh, who are looking to make income and use social media to promote their businesses, yes. how, what are some of the best practices uh, to implement you know, while using their social media? Well, um, every business has a brand and need to have a plan. So the key thing, like we spoke ab uh, off camera, is uh, when you're setting up your business, one of the key things that I really advocate for is come up with your brand strategy. Um, how, what kind of business are you planning to set up? Uh, what kind of a brand are you planning to, to build? Uh, what are the values of this business? What is your vision? What is your mission? What is the voice that I want to use while communicating? And voice, I don't mean male or female. <laughs> You're talking about um, <laughs> the style yeah. that you use to communicate. What will be your distinctive brand colors? What will your logo look like? Uh, how, what are the kind of different templates that you will be using for different types of design? And, and that will help you to make your brand distinctive so that when you get into the social media, uh, you ask yourself, what exactly is my goal? Is it brand awareness? Is it uh, manage reputation? Is it uh, mm -hmm. uh, generate leads which lead to conversions or even run conversion-based campaigns? So you really need to be very clear exactly where you're getting into these social media platforms if you are a business not just setting up a social media biz, uh, social media page mm -hmm. uh, without really knowing exactly what you're going to get out of that place because some businesses uh, let's say for example you target corporates mm -hmm. really will you get a lot of leads or customers from these social media play, uh, social media platforms mm -hmm. uh, but you need to have those platforms active so that you can be able to communicate and tell the people exactly what you've been up to, sharing your testimonials, sharing case studies, just to showcase what your work is all about. But if you, let's say you have, you run, um, uh, let's say you're sh selling shoes, I mean, that is what a lot of you are doing, mm -hmm. or you're into content creation, you, you take very nice photos, you do really good, shoots uh, for weddings. Um, you may want to look for customers on the on this platform. So you have to ask yourself, what exactly is my goal? Okay. Am I doing this for brand awareness, for people to get to know me and what I have to offer? Or am I doing that plus now letting people know exactly what we have done for other people and at the mm -hmm. same time asking yourself, am I doing this also to be able to get more clients uh, from this platform? So you have to have a clear goal. goal, a measurable goal that you will be able to say over this period of time, this is what I'm looking forward to get mm -hmm. so that you are able to track your progress day by day. And then when you set that goal now, you have to come up with a content calendar because social media is all about content creation, whether it is photo, whether it is uh, designed graphics, whether it is both still or motion graphics, that is videos or graphical um, uh, videos or it is just written content. You have to come up with content that resonates with your audience. So you have to come up with a content plan and a content calendar that will guide uh, exactly what you will be posting, when you will be posting, and even the type of content you will be mm. posting. But at the same time, you have to consider uh, which content you will be posting in which platform, uh, which content is good for your business on Facebook, on yeah. LinkedIn, mm -hmm. on Instagram, on TikTok, on X. You have to figure out all that before you get yourself out there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now that you've mentioned the different platforms that are there, yes. uh, do we have social media platforms that are best used for certain businesses than others? Let's say um, someone who's uh, into, uh, I don't know, someone who's in media, 
mm. then Instagram would be the best platform. Then someone who's into some serious stuff, then Facebook will be a good platform for them. So what happens is uh, when you look at uh, these platforms that are there, LinkedIn is known for professional connections and more serious people are on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. But these people are also on Facebook. Facebook is one platform that encompasses all. Uh, you will find all manner of people on Facebook and you can achieve all goals on Facebook. But when you go to Instagram, anything that is um, visual focused or more visual focused in terms of photos, you will really do well. On, on Instagram. Let's say, for example, you are in photography, you are mm. into catering business, or you are a restaurant, you want to showcase your meals and all that. You, you really do well on, on, on Instagram. But at the same time, you can create short videos uh, for Instagram Reels or put them on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, you can do the same for, uh, for, for, for Facebook. Facebook. When you come to LinkedIn, you can do thought leadership kind of videos. You want to educate people on a particular issue you want to you know promote a particular ad uh, short clip 30 seconds five minutes mm -hmm. that people uh, can really can really learn from or get to discover about your product or service mm -hmm. but most importantly what you need to ask yourself is who is my target audience for my business or for this thing that i'm doing mm -hmm. then you, you you do your own research and ask yourself where are these people most likely to spend their time. Mm. Uh, when you figure out where they are most likely to spend their time, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or whichever platform, platform then you ask yourself, what exact, what kind of a campaign am I going to, 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 to run on that platform? Like yeah. for example, if you look at us at Calstick, what you do is mm -hmm. we use TikTok for brand awareness. You will find us dancing, posting some other types of videos. We, we never sell anything. On, uh -huh. on TikTok, but a lot of people have been able to discover our brand Street on TikTok. TikTok. Uh -huh. But when you come to Facebook and Instagram, mm -hmm. we are able to promote what uh, we do as a company. Mm -hmm. We sell there, we are able to tell people, this is uh, what you've been able to, this, to do for this particular client. We share case studies on Facebook and Instagram. When mm -hmm. you go to LinkedIn, we share thought leadership content. Every Thursday, I, I host um, a live LinkedIn podcast where I interview peer-to-peer -peer conversations with other entrepreneurs asking different questions on building businesses. We share articles uh, every Tuesday on LinkedIn, but now we also mix content that we post mm -hmm. on TikTok, the one that we post on Instagram, we also cross post on LinkedIn some different times. So you also ask yourself, or you have to ask yourself, which content do I promote? on which platform and what is the goal because you can have a variety of goals yeah. and then one platform will push your goal uh, one particular goal and the other can the push other platform the other can goal. put can push the other goal because i mean all platforms are, are important you need to only know which platform do i use for which benefit because i mean these platforms are free Yes. Uh, before we get into the tools that are there and how to maximize on them, the people yeah. who usually say, and it's interesting that it's mostly, uh, is it, did I say techies? Mm. Or techies that do coding uh, and mm. everything. They're not very active on social media because of probably their nature. Some people who are introverted prefer not to be on social media. So how yes. important is it? For them, it really doesn't market them. They're, they're fine how they are. So what will you say on that? L let me say this. Um, in this accelerated world, we are in the technology space. Um, almost everyone is coding something. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the people that have your capabilities, there are quite many. So the question is, what will make you different? If, if I'm looking for, for a software developer um, and I have close to 100 of them that are interested to join my company and all your capabilities are the same, I mean, all of you can do what I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to be done. What will make me choose you and not him? Mm -hmm. yeah, and, 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 and that is why you find uh, organizations are increasingly uh, looking at your social media activities when you apply for a job. I would be more than willing to hire somebody who has a learning ability, may not have so much fine-tuned skills, but they have the learning ability, but at the same time, they have been promoting their work on this basis. Because definitely it means when they come on board, 
they will be able to help us sell the brand um, through social media, through mm -hmm. their own platforms. Okay. Then somebody who just come, they know how to code, they know how to design, but they know nothing else. Nobody knows they do it apart from themselves. So it's really important to even in increase or your, your marketability to just go out there, just find one platform, tell people what you do, uh, tell people how you solve problems, mm -hmm. solve people's problems, give advice yeah. because that will help you have a competitive advantage. I'm, I'm, I mean, if, if somebody is looking for work at Y254 and you have the same capabilities, I mean, the company will go to the person who has more followers because the moment they announce that they they will be hosting a show at Y254. The station has gotten more <laughs> viewership from these person's followers. Yeah. I mean, I would I better hire somebody who has 10,000 followers who are constantly engaged as somebody who is just has 500 followers but never tells them anything. Okay. I mean, the world has changed. You mm -hmm. have to put yourself out, out there, there and your work. Make people know what you are all about, mm -hmm. not just you. Okay, so make yeah. sure you market yourself regardless of what you're doing. Yes. Uh, all right. So now, social media tools. Uh, what are some of the social media tools, and how can you know businesses and people maximize on them? Well, we have Crowdfire, we have Hootsuite. Uh, th th this, this, these tools help. Uh, we have Sprout Social, and quite many others that mm -hmm. help uh, you to manage your content, uh, scheduling, especially for people who are busy or have a lot of platforms to, you know, to to manage. So these platforms helps you to, when you come up with your content calendar mm -hmm. and you come up with your the content itself and the, and the posting schedules, you can use these tools to post your content, manage all your pages in one platform and be able to look at the analytics and look at how your content is performing. Okay. Yeah. And how important is it to look at the analytics just to do a review of how, how it's performing? The most important bit of analytics is just what I mentioned. You need to know how your content is doing. Mm -hmm. Remember we said before you get into social media, you have to ask yourself what goal you have. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and ask yourself, what are the results that I've driven? Mm -hmm. uh, we set this goal. How far are we on this? And then plus, these analytics will be able to tell you which content is performing much better than the other. And then it will guide you to know, what when you know which on? content is performing much better than the other, you will know where to invest your time, which content you're going to, be, to, to, to produce more. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, there's no need of producing content that is not performing in any way. Okay. Yes. What about um, other strategies like uh, search engine optimization and the like to make sure that your content really gets out there and gets engagement? So um, you build engagement over time. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about search engine optimization, you're talking about websites, not just social, social media. media. And majorly, what you talk about social search engine optimization is if uh, today I build a restaurant and I do not put a signage that says this is a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, nobody will know what it is. And if I don't tell people this is a restaurant mm -hmm. and I don't put my word out there telling people I opened a restaurant or I opened a grocery store, mm -hmm. I mean, nobody will get to know. So how the internet works is when I build a website and we actually do build good websites at Calstick. Mm -hmm. uh, if you build a website and just leave it there, nobody will ever know that you have a website. So what happens is you create an amazing website that is user friendly, that has really good content, that is optimized in terms of structure, in terms of uh, industry keywords. But also, you have to submit your website to Google, mm -hmm. to all search engine platforms that are there. A and that is why you find most people complaining, I have an amazing website, but it does not show up on Google uh, on search, search. Uh -huh. uh, on search results pages. So what happens is uh, when you create a website, you have to tell Google, I have this website, show it to people. So what happens is if I go to Google because it's the one that we mostly use on search engine and I search something, what I'm doing is I'm telling Google, this is what I'm looking for. Go out there. Mm -hmm and give me the best results. Mm -hmm. So Google uses what we call crawlers. So crawlers go and search millions of websites that have been submitted to, 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 to them. Mm -hmm. 
and they bring results based on exact keywords uh, match or exact phrases match keyword concentration and all that mm -hmm. so what happens is once you submit your website to google then you submit a sitemap a sitemap is a list of all links on your website mm -hmm. then uh, the next thing about search engine, op search engine optimization is there is uh, the technical seo and that is how your links are structured um, what your links are saying because Technical XEO really plays a very important role when doing uh, search engine optimization or making a website visible. So you have to optimize them with the industry keywords, exactly what your users are looking for. And at the same time, on your every website page that you create, you have to ask yourself, for people to discover this page, what exactly will they be looking for? For example, if today you look for you go on Google and search PR agency in Kenya, PR agency in Nairobi, CalStick will appear on, on the first page mm -hmm. as the first result. And the reason is, we asked ourselves, what exactly will people be looking for, for when, mm -hmm. when, and we want to show up for them? Because basically, what you talk about search engine optimization is, we are saying, show your people, your potential customers are looking for you, for what you offer on the internet. Show up for them. So you ask yourself, what kind of words are they using to search on the internet? That is what we call keywords. Then what kind of phrases are they looking for? We call that key phrases. Mm -hmm. Then use that, tailor your content, make sure there is a concentration of them. But at the same time, make sure your content is making sense. You mm -hmm. don't want just to put words all over. So make yeah. you, you find a way in which these words, mm -hmm. the keywords, the key phrases are part of your content on that page. And then there's something we call, uh, if, if you're using a, a, a search engine optimization plugin, like for example, Yoast uh, or Rank Math, mm -hmm. there's something called keywords. So oh, there's a place you put your meta description. The meta description is basically that snippet that appears under every search result on Google that tells you a little bit more about that page. Mm -hmm. So make sure that meta description has your keywords and or key phrases in it and at the same time you have set your own keyword that you want it to rank much higher and that will really help in your search engine initiatives but also there's something called search engine marketing mm -hmm. that is you marketing yourself on google if you search anything on the internet there are some results that has on the left hand side written ad that those are people who have bought keywords they want people who are searching for let's say properties land for sale in Ruiru. You want, you have a property that you're selling in Droiro and you want people to uh, to come to your website. So you, you buy such keywords and you want, when people search, you appear on the first page of Google and then uh, Google will drive traffic to you. But also most importantly, you might do all those things. But if your website, people are not able to find what they are looking for mm -hmm. on your website, they, you, you're going to have very high bounce rates and you're not going to convert anyone. So when you're doing all this, you also have to factor in the user experience of your website, but also you have to make sure that every page you create is sales ready. Okay. Because at the end of the day, if you create a website page, uh, I mean, a website has so many pages, but every page you, you create, mm -hmm. there's definitely something you're telling people. And there's a, an action you want them to take, whether it's book an appointment or insert the details to make a purchase, make sure the call to actions are very well outlined and that people do not have to be redirected. I, you better have somebody coming to your website, spend five seconds and they have made a purchase or they have contacted you. Instead of somebody coming and spends two minutes looking for what that brought, that thing that brought them there and they end up even not leaving you with their email address. I mean, mm -hmm. you will have done zero work. Okay. Yeah. So it's, you need to be very intentional in everything that you do in terms of social media management. Exactly. It's all things digital, not just social media, because uh -huh. websites are part of digital, not social media. Okay. Yes. All right. What about uh, the use of hashtags in social media? How efficient are they? Well, basically, hashtags helps you track everything that has been posted under that name mm -hmm. or under that phrase. Basically, that's what hashtags are used for. Uh, are, they, are they efficient? Well, they're efficient, but, but people overuse them um, because... This is what happens if, for example, somebody is doing a research on, mm -hmm. um, on let's say, content creation in Kenya. 
so they'll search concentric content creation in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And probably on Twitter, there is a hashtag content creation. So every post that has been posted under that hashtag will appear. I mean, that's what the role of hashtags is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Basically. So you can use a particular hashtag, but it is not popular. Definitely people will not use your content. Mm -hmm. And you can use a hashtag that is popular, but your content gets no engagement. Mm -hmm. Because when you use a particular hashtag, when people click on that hashtag, content that has more engagements, if it is on Twitter, currently called X, the, the tweet that has, I don't know now whether it's called a tweet or an tweet X. Or an X. <laughs> <laughs> so the one that has more engagement in terms of likes and retweets um, will definitely rank higher than the one that has zero. Yeah. Yes. Okay. The key thing here is, yes, use hashtags, but make sure in your content plan, mm -hmm. create content that is shareable. Create content that people want to engage with. Not just content because people are using this hashtag, let me use this. Let me let me let me use it. People are engaging with this content. Let me let me create this type of content. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, what do my users want to read and learn? And let me tell you, I mean it's really simple. People share content that they may find educative. If you find an educative post, you will be tempted to share it on your uh, on your platform yes, so. because you want to show people, quote unquote, you are also smart. I mean, that is the whole reason people share. Or you have found it funny and you want to share on your platform so that people can think find you funny, it. think you are funny and also laugh in the process. I mean, that is why people share memes. I found a meme that is so funny and I don't want to laugh alone. I also want people to see that uh, I also know I, I have a sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you have to ask yourself, my audience, what are they most interested in? Then create content with that in mind. They will like it, they will comment to it, they will tag their friends, and they will share it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before we finish uh, this conversation, yeah. how do you handle negative comments on social media, especially if it's a business? So uh, there's three things to, to that. Mm -hmm. uh, three A's. The first one is to acknowledge the comment. I mean, the comment is there, you can see it. You have to acknowledge the comment and then uh -huh. it's there. Then the second thing, the second A is you have to assess it. Uh, there's two types of comment. There is comments that have valid concerns, valid feedback or valid inquiries. The others are trolls. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, um, what kind of a comment is this? Is this a valid customer, a valid, a real human being or is just a troll? Then the third A is to act. So you have to ask yourself, uh, how do I react to this? If it is a troll, you can just delete or just do away with okay. it mm -hmm. or block the person. But if it is a real concern about your business, maybe it is a customer who is okay. not happy, uh, you have to ask yourself, what kind of feedback do I give? Uh, and, and you need to ask yourself, uh, this feedback, or how do I address this person's concerns? Do I address it immediately replying to their comment or going directly to their inbox or both, depending on the intensity? Mm -hmm. And this is where um, reputation management and crisis management and stakeholder engagement comes in. You have to engage, and that is why every organization needs PR people. Um, most yeah. organizations overlook that, but you need a PR person to be able to advise you. This is what this user has said. How do I respond to it? Is it a direct comment? Do I inbox this person? Do I reply to the comment inbox or call the person or even uh, visit this person? You have to, you know, acknowledge the comment, assess it, and then make a decision on how exactly you're going to respond to, to, respond to it. Reaction. Because uh, part of the mistakes that people make is um, overlooking some things and probably thinking replying to a comment or just in one in your in your office replying to a comment mm -hmm. and then now that blows up everything yeah. and now you are trending right left and center because of the feedback that you gave so when you look at a comment especially negative comments you really have to engage the relevant people with the relevant know-how on stakeholder engagement to know exactly how mm -hmm. to respond to a particular issue as it comes because it can make or break, break your business. All right. Yeah. Great. Uh, finally, as we close now, you yeah. give people, where can people find you if they need your services? 
And um, just before that, tell us, if someone was to take something from this, what are the key things that they're supposed to go home with and you can direct them directly? Well, um, I, I think I've only gotten the last question. <laughs> oh, and where can people find you? Ah, um, <laughs> Uh, as Kimani, I'm available on the internet. Just search Kimani Patrick on Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, on all platforms. I use Kimani Patrick. Uh, mm -hmm. You can direct message me there. Our office at Cal of Calstick is Dika West Center, fifth floor, uh, suit five or seven. Or you can just PR agency in Kenya. You will find Calstick and you can be able to get in touch with us. Our website is very well optimized. You can be able to. Um, Send us a message and we'll get back to you within 12 hours. But if you get anything from this platform, the key thing is uh, you have a brand, whether it is personal or business, and you have the responsibility of promoting this brand. So make sure you take the initiative to get to those platforms that you created uh, and decide which platform first to start with, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or TikTok, where most of the people that you want to resonate with you or your personal brand, and then start creating content there. It could be simple posts, it could be uh, you know, questions and answer sessions, it could be articles, it could be just updating them, but let people know who you are, what you do, and what you stand for. Because whether you know it or not, you have a brand and you have a responsibility to make yourself and other people benefit from it. Thank okay. you. Okay, I love yeah. that. You have, you have a brand and you have a responsibility to make sure that you have a responsibility to make sure that people... People, you and other people benefit from it. Benefit from it. Okay, Absolutely. thank you very much, Kimani, for coming on board and sharing great insights. I appreciate it. With us, that has been Kimani Patrick, the CEO of Calstick Group Limited, talking to us about social media management. I hope you've taken something from it. So we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with some entertainment. Stick with us. Thank you.